What is going on guys, Wendy CD Bass in here. Hey, today we're gonna do a video that a lot of people have been asking me about for quite some time, and I've just been dragging my feet a little bit to do it. So today we're gonna do a rod and a reel arsenal, and this is gonna be reviewing basically my rods and reels for 2017, because I do have some planned changes for 2018. So I've got quite a few rods. I've built them up over the last few years, quite a few reels. I've changed my setups around. I've been really trying to create specific combos for specific types of fishing. So let's jump in right away. All right, we're gonna start out with my bread and butter. This is my combo that I use more than anything. And both of these were acquired this last year. So I've got my Shimano Antares DC and I've got it paired with a favorite, big sexy, seven foot, medium heavy. This is my best go, go to all around, all purpose rod and reel. I can basically throw any type of bait I want with this reel. Don't have to worry about the wind. There's basically no backlash ever. I looked around for a rod after I bought this reel. Finally decided to jump on the favorite bandwagon and test out something and I just love the look of the favorite Big Sexy. And it was on sale and so I said, let's give it a shot. This rod has performed remarkably well this year. Honestly, I will probably be adding some more favorite rods down the road because I really like the build quality. I'm a cork fan. I like cork, um, although I got a nice divot taken out of the cork there. Yeah, that was stupid. This is just a really, really good all-around go-to setup. This is not cheap, obviously. This is a very expensive setup, so that's why I don't have a ton of these. But if I could, I would. Let's see, my next probably most common setup most thrown setup was this is my frog and combo so i've got a ducket heavy seven three i think i've worn off all of the the letters on here it's been put to heavy use but i'm pretty sure this is a seven three heavy i've got it paired with a daiwa tatula type r this is a little bit older reel 8.1 to 1. i originally had daiwa zillion paired on here that zillion blew up a gear shattered. I'm working with Tackle Trap to see if I can trace down that part because I would really like that reel working again. But I threw this on afterwards and this one has its own issue too. I don't know if you can see it, but this handle is wonky. Let's just say I fell one night. There might be a handle shaped imprint in my ribs. And ever since it's, uh, it's leaning a bit. Really nice reel. I actually really, really like this rod. I actually got this rod free when I bought a ducket reel, which I'll show you in a little bit. I got a free rod with the purchase of a reel. I've been wanting to test out ducket stuff for a while. So this has been a great frog rod. I love it's stiff. It's perfect for frogging. The downside with this rod for me, and this is this is a deal breaker, honestly, in the long term, are the micro guides. Now this one's fine because it's doubled up, but you'll notice no guide there. Uh no guide there. And if we go out further no guide there. That's right, three guides fell off this year while fishing this thing. I'm not a fan of micro guides. I just don't like them. I don't think they hold up as well. So this rod is being retired probably in this year. I may try to put some other guides back on. It's kind of a side project because I, again, I do like the rod, but I'm gonna be in the market for a new frog and setup this year for sure. Um, I need another one too for Christina. So we're probably gonna get two whole new setups. I wanna get the Zillion working again. I really wanna get this Tatula with a new uh, new handle and then I should be good to go there. Now, little sidetrack here. Mid-year, I decided once my Zillion went down and once I messed up the handle on there, I needed another frog and reel. And you guys don't know this at the time, but I was gonna be starting to work with Cast King. Casking reached out to me and it just didn't end up working out. Around that same time, even before Casking reached out to me, I went out and bought this. This is a Casking Speed Demon. It's a 9.3 to one gear ratio. Thought it'd be perfect for frog fishing. Uh, this is a little bit before, I don't know if you guys watched Milliken when he started doing some stuff on this. This is a little bit before that. I took this reel out. I put it on one of my heavier rods. Went out frog fishing. It lasted one day. It was working one minute and uh, suddenly it wasn't. Every time I put the spool in and I would reel, it was binding. If I took the spool out, perfectly fine. So this winter I decided, hey, I was gonna do a little bit of digging, break this thing down, take it apart, see what the problem was. And lo and behold, inside the break I found, let's see, this little piece of plastic here. It's a little plastic disc. And that was putting pressure on the spool, which was causing it not to rotate very well. I took that out. Now it works fine. So 
I don't know what to say about that. That, that makes me a little bit concerned. I, I don't know what that is or whether it's needed, but um, I don't think so. So we're going to give this another shot next year. So, I mean, I had a bad taste in my mouth from Casking just based on this. I went out and bought this and, and immediately didn't work. And then I was also working with Casking's marketing area. And I don't know whether there's a breakdown of communication, but just some things, some balls were dropped. And it left a really sour taste in my mouth with Casking. You know, to be honest, they sent me, they sent me a reel afterwards because they felt bad about everything that happened. I'll show you that in a little bit. In my experience with the Speed Demon and then with everything that was going on communication-wise between the company and me, I just decided it wasn't right for the future. So, take with that what you will. Next combo. So, this is my other frog and setup. This has been Christina's frog and setup, but this is really a good Texas rig setup. I've got a Lose Speed Spool LFS on here. Um, this is one of the cheaper reels. This is like 75 bucks on Amazon. I, I picked up two of these a while back. I think these are actually a really, really good intro reel. I get some pretty good cast distance on them. I gotta clean all these. Holy cow, this thing is dirty. Good frogging setup. I've got this on uh, a Abu Veritas rod. 7.3 medium heavy, that's what I thought. This has been a workhorse rod for me. Um, I have had very mixed results with Abu's other rods. However, this one performed remarkably well. You can see the last thing I had on tied on here was this little Booyah Bates uh, with a little Wu Tungsten tungsten weight texas rig this is the rig i caught my personal best on this year i think it was actually on this rod too 5.6 right at the end of the year didn't get it on film unfortunately but it was a really nice fish this is a great reel for those of you who are wondering what reel should i start out with go check them out i mean i'm not a huge lose fan to be honest but these have been really really good for their price point mine looked like hell i don't know if you can see all the paint wearing off and damage, but um, it's been a really, really good setup. I used to have actually the Daiwa on this rod, took it off after I had all the problems with the Zillion, so threw the speed spool on and it's been A-OK. -okay. So nothing to change here going into 2018. All right, now fast forward to the fall. What's my favorite type of fishing? Jerkbait fishing. That's right, jerkbait fishing. I love fishing jerkbait. Here's my jerkbait setup. So I even got a Vision 110 tied on here right now. This is a Shimano. Aldebaran, phenomenal little reel. Before the DC, the Antares, this was my favorite reel. It's super smooth, casts lightweight baits a mile, and it is super, super small. I don't know if you can see this. I'm not a big dude, but my hand completely covers that reel. They say, why would you want that? Well, when I am fishing a jerk bait, I want complete control. I want full range of motion on that action. By holding that reel like that, I can control the whole rod, every jerk that I need to make. This is my dedicated jerkbait setup. So I've got a St. Croix Mojo. This is a 6.8 medium extra fast tip. The extra fast tip is super important. Stiff enough backbone where you can really get a good jerk on that. Um, but this is just, in my opinion, the ideal setup. You can maybe go a little bit shorter on the rod. Uh, fishing from the bank sometimes 6.8 is still a little bit long, but it works all right for me. And I've caught a ton of fish on this combo. Again, not super cheap, but the St. Croix Mojo rods, I actually really, really like. They're kind of a middle price point, a little over hundred dollars or so. They've been, they've been phenomenal for me. You'll see as we go through more of my combos, I've got a bunch of them. Really, really nice, nice little combo here. I would highly recommend this to anyone who likes fishing jerk baits because it's one of my favorite styles of fishing. In fact, I actually went out and decided to make another jerkbait combo. And you say, why would you need two? Well, sometimes I go fishing with Christina and she needs something similar. And so this one's a little bit different. I've got a St. Croix Avid X 6.8 medium extra fast tip. Same as before, just a little different rod. But then I've got a JDM Shimano Scorpion. Really, 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 really like this reel. It's a little bit bigger than the Aldebaran. It doesn't throw lightweight baits as well, but it's a really, really nice reel. And I just love the look of it. I mean, it's just super, super smooth looking. If you haven't noticed a the theme, I do like Shimano stuff. It's just personal preference. I've gone with them for a long time. I've had really, really good experience with their, their reels. They're a little bit more pricey. Gonna get a lot of reels on eBay. Got a good deal on this one. I would highly recommend this. This is a great jerk bait setup. I've taken this in the creeks fishing. They're really good for throwing a little topwater popper in the creeks. Money. And lastly, of my bait casters, um, of the ones that I use the most, we'll go with, you know, this combo here. So this is another Shimano. 
This is a Metanium. It's not a DC. It's the older version. I've got this paired up with a G Loomis. I believe this is a 610, yeah, 610 medium heavy E6X rod. This was to be my kind of jig rod. It's a little short, honestly. I end up using this for all around fishing, just tons of different stuff. So you see right now, I've actually got a chatterbait tied on here. It's a really, really nice setup. Not cheap, but I feel like over time as I upgrade rods and reels, I've spent a little bit more to get honestly better quality. It truly is better quality. There may be a few brands out there who can provide you that quality at a cheaper price. I just haven't had the best luck in finding that consistently. I think that's the key. You could find it every once in a while, but consistently throughout a certain brand, you may not find that same level of quality that you'll find in something that's a bit more expensive. This is a great, great reel. So. All right, let's talk spinning setups. So I've got three main spinning rods. Mostly these are used in the creeks when I'm creek fishing. I, I don't use spinning rods a ton when I'm going out to the ponds. I can do most of that with my baitcasters, but I do a lot of creek fishing, so it's important to me to have good quality stuff that's gonna hold up and last. And so what I've got here is one of the older models of the Shimano Stratic 2500 size. And again, I've got it on a St. Croix Mojo. This is a 6.8 medium power, extra fast tip. Again, for fighting these creek smalls, you don't want something super strong. You want something a little bit give on the tip. Uh, you can see actually I have a little Ned rig tied on right here, if that would focus. Okay, well that's as good as it's gonna focus. This is a great creek setup. I absolutely love it. I really have no complaints. The older models you can get a little bit cheaper. So if you're interested in getting a Stratic, which is kind of like the go-to main, you know, higher end spinning reel, this is the one I would recommend. I am realizing that all my reels need a big time cleaning because this thing is dirty as heck too. But I've probably used this last, so this is probably one of the dirtiest. I like this one so much that I got a second. That's right, another one, same reel, basically the same rod. This is a 610 medium light extra fast. So a little bit different, still the same general idea. This one, I've got a little inline spinner on. I always take two to the creek, one with the Ned Rig, one with the inline spinner. You can catch a ton of fish just on those two baits and two rods. Carrying around two rods is a little bit of a pain, but when, especially when you're in the creeks, but I like to have that versatility because sometimes fish are going after the spinner, sometimes fish are going after the Ned Rig. I have to have that ability to change my setups quickly when I spot a fish, because a lot of times skinny water fishing, super shallow, I can see these fish. I need to be able to change quickly based on what they want to see. And so those are my two main go-to baits, but I have one more spinning setup that I want to show you guys. And you guys have seen this in a bunch of my videos. This is, again, the same rod, St. Croix Mojo, medium light, extra fast tip. If you can't tell, I like St. Croix Mojos. <laughs> this is the reel. This is a Cat King Kodiak. So this is actually the reel they sent me. They kind of, again, felt bad. They were like, well, we're gonna send you, you know, one of our higher end models here. And so I'm comparing it to Shimano Stratix, you know, like the staple reel. To be honest, when I pulled this thing out of the box, I was immediately really impressed. It does not feel, honestly, like this. This is a plastic reel. It feels super lightweight. It feels, feels cheap. It may work fine, but it just feels, it feels cheap. It just doesn't feel like it's super high quality. This feels like super high quality, and I'm not even exaggerating in the slightest. Maybe it's just because it's heavy, It's it's got a lot of weight to it, but this thing feels like it's built really, really durably. This handle alone is, I, I would put it above the Stratix. Uh, it feels every bit as tough as that does, and maybe even more so, and at half the price point. If I had the choice between two of these, or one of the Stratix, I would probably choose two of these. This is that high-end reel and the low cost price thing we were talking about earlier. I think this retails for like 65 or 70 bucks, something like that. Really, really nice reel. So all in all, for like $180, this combo, maybe even less, 160 if you find it on sale, you could have a phenomenal spinning reel setup that can handle anything. Just my two cents. So we're coming down the home stretch. We're really getting to the end of reels and rods that I use on a consistent basis. This one really doesn't really fall into that category, but I need to show it anyway because I picked this up this year. This is a dedicated swim bait setup. It's a beautiful setup. I've thrown it a little bit. It's made really to throw those big, big, 
big swim baits. I've been getting away with throwing on some of my other rods and reels, but for some of the bigger ones, I need this. So this is a Shimano Curato 301E. It's huge. I mean, it's a giant reel. I've got a huge 7.6, no, I'm sorry, 7.9 Dobbins Fury. And this was one I did a lot of research online before I picked it up. It's just a ginormous combo, um, which maybe is what prevents me from throwing it so much and bring it around with me is it doesn't fit well in the back of my truck, doesn't fit in my boat's rod locker. Should have done maybe a little bit re more research there. And it's just big. It's a little bit more awkward. I do think that when I do catch something on this, it's going to be like personal best size quality, but I've got the combo for it. Just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful combo. All right, earlier I mentioned that I have two Luz LFSs. Here's my other one. Again, uh, Luz Speedspool LFS, 75 bucks on Amazon. And I've got this on a Bass Pro Carbon Light. Um, I don't throw this a ton. Um, I use this, this is kind of like my junk rod. I'll throw a lipless crankbait. I'll throw, I'll throw a bunch of crankbaits on here. Um, I've even thrown Ned Rigs. I've thrown you know, little shaky heads. This is a six foot nine, medium heavy. You notice I have a lot of those like high six foot, maybe seven foot, medium heavy rods. That's because in my opinion, they're the best go-to all around. This is like an all purpose style combo. Similar, whoa. Similarly, I've got this Bass Pro Bionic reel. This is a really cheap reel. I don't even remember how much it costs. And I've got it on a really cheap setup. These are these Skeet Reese design rods they're bright yellow i don't know why you picked that color honestly kind of ugly this was their finesse worm and fluke rod it's a seven foot i think this is a medium power fast action tip i don't throw this a ton this is kind of like a backup and this one might actually be demoted at least the reel demoted to my sturgeon fishing setup which is a whole nother lineup of rods and reels that were kind of older bass reels that I've used and now they've been pushed back and are dedicated for sturgeon fishing because they don't take nearly as much abuse. They're not as great a quality. The really only thing when I'm sturgeon fishing is that it can cast and it has okay drag. That's what matters to me. This one's got the micro guides. Um, I think I started getting a good deal of these uh, at Dick Sporting Goods. They were having some sales on these rods and I was picking up for like 40 bucks or something like that and I thought it was a good deal. They're not durable. They don't last. I just I'm not a huge fan I've had some tips break off. I have one more of those. This one doesn't have the micro guides It's a little bit shorter. This is their jig worm rod and it is only a 6-4 How often do you throw a jig on a 6-4 length rod? I don't think I ever have <laughs> I was using this thing for throwing like chatterbaits, even crankbaits. This was better for fishing from the bank. I think that was why I bought it. I was like, I need something a little bit shorter. Now here's the ducket reel that I was talking about. The ducket, I don't even know what they call it, 300 LG. This is the one I bought this for like 75 bucks and I got a free rod. And when I did the math, I was like, that rod costs more than that. And I was going to get a free reel out of it. Why not? But fortunately, this reel is not that great. It's just, yeah. Nothing to get excited about. All my other reels are a little bit better, pretty much. So I have this on one of my kind of last to use setups. Um, really, that's about it. That is, that's my rod and reel arsenal. I've got 13 combos down here. These are not things that I just accumulated within one year and I've been gradually upgrading and upgrading as I can. And I will continue to do that. I'm gonna be getting a new frogging setup this year. I'll probably get a frogging setup for Christina. Glasses are falling down. Really, you don't need this many. I'm gonna tell everyone, you don't need this, this many at all. If I could pick the only combos from here, let's say I pick three, I would probably pick, I'm biased, but I'd probably pick my favorite and my Antares, but I realize that's out of a lot of your budgets. Definitely the loose speed spool and the Abu Veritas rod about 150 160 dollars maybe and it's a really 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 good all-around setup i mean that that's one of my main three rods that i always have with me throughout the year if i could choose just three it would definitely be it would probably be that one um it would be my favorite and it would be a spinning setup so two baycasters one which is a medium heavy longer rod like seven foot medium heavy the other one is like a 610. Between those two, you can do 90% of everything and then you've got the spinning reel set up to do everything else. So three setups, that's really what I recommend for anyone who really wants to get into fishing. And the other thing, if you noticed on every single one of my rods, every one of them here, 
besides a big swim bait one. I have braid tied on. Braid is my basis for everything. I start with braid and I work off of it from there. If I tie on a floral leader, I'm using it for jerkbait fishing, I'm going to have a braid backing floral leader. 20 pound braid is my go-to on just about everything. The bigger rods, the, the jig rods, the frogging rods, I usually have 50 pound, that's usually my go-to. 50 pound Power Pro braid. Power Pro is my main braid line. Seaguar and Vizix is usually my floral. And that's about it. So, those are my setups, guys. Um, like I said, I probably have another six or seven that are in the garage, too, that I'm not going to show you. Those are more for you know, sturgeon fishing and other stuff. But I've got, a, I've got a fly rod, too, somewhere. That's everything. I hope that answers a lot of your questions. You guys have been asking for this kind of video for a while, and I've been meaning to do one. In fact, I actually filmed one last year, and it just didn't turn out as well as I would have liked. So I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions about these setups, or if you're thinking about getting one of these rods and reels, definitely leave a comment below. Feel free to ask any question. I'll do my best to answer um, <laughs> with a, an honest, unbiased opinion, because uh, I've got experience with a lot of different companies here. The one company that I don't have good experience with is Quantum. I've had really poor luck with them. I do have one for sturgeon fishing, and it's been not good. So, again, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below. If you like me when I do these kind of tackle reviews, and you know, you see all my some of my tackle back here, I've been organizing, and you know, I've got some some uh, older fishing tackle. I've been meaning to do a video on some of my antique stuff because I got a ton. Uh, I've got way more upstairs. I got another case over there. It's kind of a hobby of mine is collecting that. If you'd like to see some of that, definitely let me know. And make sure you drop a like in this kind of video because I will do more things like this. I've been working on my basement trying to get it ready to do a little bit more filming down here. I, I have some ideas and I'd, I'd like to share them with you. So I appreciate you guys watching as always. Thanks again so much for all the support. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that. At the end of this video, there's a little round circle with my with my picture in it. Hit that and that'll, that'll subscribe you. Definitely hit that. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. It's the Winnie City Bass inside and out. Oh.